Hi, Floss Tube. I'm Jessie. Welcome to Bobo Jessie Stitches. And this is Flossoween Day 2 because today is October 2nd. It is Sunday. Um, we had a Texans game today. So at the end, I'm going to add about a one minute video of our mid our um, halftime show, which was the Texas Longhorns um, show, show band. I think it was a show band that, that performed. Um, Hopefully a minute won't get me in too much trouble. So we just, that's kind of what we did. Um, it was a Texans game. We played against the the Chargers and we didn't do so well. So, so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> so, but I did get some stitching done. And as I always do, we did change up my travel stitching. Don't forget to use the hashtag if you are in the stands. Stitching in the stand cell. Um, love to see if anyone else travels with their cross stitch to various games whether it's professional school or you know little league who cares right if you're if you're traveling um be sure to use your hashtag so that we can all see what it looks like when we travel but i am working on forbidden fiber co's haunted house which was the pattern in their bot their halloween advent box or countdown box last year i did not finish it last year um so i'm continuing on this year and with the goal of finishing. So this is where I got to so far since you saw it last yesterday. Um, I filled in the bottom and the, the green that's around the pumpkins here. Um, a little bit more of the green right here. And then I have started filling in the moon. The moon, all the part up here on the moon is what I did um, today during the game. So that's where we are. And um, next up is... Um, I am opening up a box, um, a countdown box for um, from Fangirl Fibers, which is 31 Days of Haunted America. And so today, getting ready to open up October 2nd. Do -do -do, squishy, squishy, squishy. First, can I say, I appreciate that they're in paper bags because that's recyclable. And I appreciate a more um, environmentally friendly. So, let's see what we got. Sorry, for the It's a bunch of floss. All right. So, do we think it's for the floss for yesterday's pattern? Which was just as a reminder, it's the Curse Cabinet by D's Twenty Stitches, artwork by Uncanny Kari, and so that's the pattern. And so let's take a look. Let's see. We have. 777. Oops. Yes. This does look like it. 3834. Nice little purple. 02. Yep, this is all the floss for the cursed cabinet. That's 02. Nothing's going to focus, is it? I'll be sure to have my little background tomorrow. So that's 02. 30. 33. Nice little beige color there. Um, 3858, 3858, kind of a medium rosewood. It's actually funny, they not funny, they have a description of what the floss color looks like. Medium rosewood, then we have 317, which is a pewter gray. We have 823, which is a dark navy blue. 3835, which is a grape. And then a seven, oops. Huh. So this is 823. There's supposed to be a 797 for royal blue, but I have a 3045. I wonder if there's been a mix, um, a mix, miss bagging. That's the word I was thinking of, a, a miss bagging. So that's okay. Even if it is missing, I can definitely go get some DMC if I don't have it in stash. And then there is another little story to share um, from a haunted America. This is the Riviera Hotel, Las Vegas, Nevada, setting the scene. The Riviera Hotel and Casino is one of the Strip's most renowned landmarks. It is a historic hotel, some of it's cut off, so um, that marked an important milestone for being the first high-rise building in the Strip. Plus, it was the 
best hotel and casino in the area by the time it was open. It had such fame that famous people like Liberace, which was the hotel's sponsored headliner for several years, were also visitors. It was one of the pioneers of the Las Vegas we know today, filled with gambling, shows, and other performances, as well as high-range hotels and entertainment. The Riviera's connection with Mafia promotes beliefs of being haunted. Let's consider the first proposal to build the Riviera was made by a mobster from Detroit called William o. Biscoff. I don't know, the first letter's cut off. Who intended to name the hotel has the Casa Blanca. Although he withdrew from the project later on, the Riviera was always believed to hold some relation with mobsters. These reasons are enough to believe the people that witness supernatural events in the Riviera. In fact, Many workers heard frequently voices that came from nowhere in the stairwells. Besides, others said they witnessed the presence of deceased people while doing maintenance in the top story floors. Some brave hearts dared to investigate about these happenings and found out that supernatural creatures lived in the ninth floor and came out by night. There you go. That's the Bermier Hotel. Has anyone ever stayed there? Does anyone know um, if it is a haunted hotel? Um, let us know. Let us know. Anyways, um, that's it. That's all I got for today. I'm going to try to keep all these under 10 minutes. So um, I hope everyone, you're having a stitchy good time wherever you are. And may it always be spooky. Take care. Bye-bye.